to uh, this game, <laughs> Rainbow Tales, uh, an all queer game, Fall of Magic. Super excited. <laughs> I haven't hosted a game for a long time, so I feel very rusty on how to do this shit. <laughs> um, uh, I'm super excited to play Fall of Magic. Fall of Magic is one of my favorite games. It is a uh, collaborative storytelling game. There's no GM, so we'll all be playing together, making stuff up on the fly. Um, I couldn't be more excited. Uh, and especially to play with these awesome, fine folks. Uh, so uh, we're just going to go ahead and jump right on int introductions. Um, uh, tell us who you are, where we can find you on the internet, and something you're excited to share with the crowd. Abby, can you kick us off? Uh, sure. Uh, Abby Sheha, you can find me at uh, Citrine Warlock on Twitter. Um, I don't know. Like, I have no idea what I'm excited to share because I don't. That's totally fine. Know. Yeah. We're just so excited to have you play this game with us. Yeah. That's good enough. That's all we need is excitement for each other. Uh, Anders, can you take it up for us next? <laughs> yeah, um, I'm Anders. You can find me on the internet at Anders underscore D underscore K. I use he, him pronouns. I'm excited about a lot of things, and if you go on my Twitter, you can find most of them because it's a whole bunch of stuff, and I'm not going to list it. But if at the end of this you want to stick around, we're going to play Salt Marsh, and that's it's going to be awesome because I'm the dungeon master. Yeah, that's it. Yay! Uh, I'll also be there, so it's going to be yeah. one heck... What heck of a changeover between our two shows? Good change. <laughs> yep, good change magic. Anthony, tell us who you are, where we can find you, something you're excited about. Hi, my name is Anthony. He, 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 <laughs> I'm bi, and I love to roll the die. Um, <laughs> um, you can follow me at Mejirada. It's very hard to, to spell out. It's M-E-I-G-I. I just love to be here. I appreciate uh, always coming on very early, so you know, it's always uh, fun to get to meet people. Awesome. Uh, and I'm Nox. You can find me here on Bang and Rolls pretty much all the time these days. This is my almost exclusive home at this point. Um, and, uh... <laughs> I'm also by and also would love to, to, to roll the die. Or, but we lo love to. All the t whatever. whatever. Whatever we're doing here with that saying. Um, yeah, Anthony, if you can uh, uh, sit close to your mic or something about something. If we can. You're a little quiet. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little quiet? Yeah. I actually wonder oh. if, if we're getting you through your mic. It doesn't quite sound like it. Oh, that's. But I'm also adjusting some sound settings myself to make sure that you guys sound good. Chat, keep us in the know. Thank you so much. Um, while Anthony works on that, um, I'm Knox. Um, uh, uh, yes, I live here on Variant Rolls, basically. I'm a member of the Creative Council here. I uh, work with Dan and some other fine folks. Uh, thank you, Dan, for bringing me into the fold on this. Uh, originally, we were gonna. Uh, originally, I wanted to launch this show during our Pride content for the month of June, um, but just due to scheduling conflicts, we weren't able to do that. So during the month of June, our um, fundraising goals were for uh, to uh, raise money for uh, Trans Lifeline. For this particular programming slot, we're going to continue to do that. Any bits received during this time uh, will be uh, donated to Trans Lifeline uh, over the course of uh, time that we uh, run this game. I will be guiding everyone here on how to play the game, but I want to place special emphasis on the fact that I am not the GM. This is a GM-less game. Uh, I happen to know how to play it. I have the rules handy. Uh, um, but that's pretty much as far as I can take us. Everything else is up to us working together to have um, a super fun time. Um, is uh, this better? I think so. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Okay, just let me know if I need to turn down or up or, or whatever. Sounds good. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, I'm going to go ahead and... Um, move us on over to the map scene. Ooh. Which I don't think anyone is on. 
No, just me, because I have the GM role. Uh, so, let's do that. Boop. Ooh. So, oh. <laughs> so <laughs> when you play this game in person, uh, this is a digital version of this game. By the way, I want to mention that the game uh, is uh, by Heart of the Deer and Corn. Uh, you can find them on Twitter. Ross Kalman is one of the designers. Uh, he's a big supporter of folks streaming this game. Um, but the game, uh, this is a digital version. I don't want to say that there's a main way to play it, but I feel like the experience really, uh, um, the experience really shows, the in-person experience of playing this game really shows off all the work they've done with creating, not just developing the actual gameplay, but the physical product. So the physical product is an actual physical scroll, and it has actual coins, and you unroll the scroll as you move through these different locations. So I say all this because I don't have Fog of War set up on this map, so I'm just going to encourage you guys to don't look ahead of the map. I haven't. Um, and that's just sort of in the spirit of the game. So to start off, uh, I don't thank everyone for their patience uh, as I navigate through a million screens <laughs> uh, as I'm trying to run production for this bad boy. Um, to start us off, oops, we're going to start with uh, character creation. So the, let me actually refresh my memory here. On the far left of the map, you'll see some options. We're going to go through them one by one. Uh, before that, though, let me read the introduction to you real quick to sort of set up the premise of our story. Um, magic is dying, and the Magus is dying with it. We travel to the realm of Umbra, where magic was born. So the first thing that everyone is going to do is we're going to choose a name. Uh, you can see the name list here on the far left corner of the map. And there's not a turn order or anything here, so really just kind of, if, if something jumps out at you, I'm going to encourage you to sort of speak up and say, hey, I, this is, I like this name, whatever. I would like oh, to take, it. oh, go ahead, sorry. No, no, I was just going to say, they're all really good names. They, they are. Um, I like Justice. I think I'm going to take Justice. Okay. So as we pick our names, I uh, make those choices. Uh, inside of Roll20, if you open up the side menu and you go to your journal, which looks like the folded up newspaper icon, uh, you'll see another folder inside of it that says PCs, and everyone will have a character assigned to them. Go in there and edit the name of your character and the other things that we pick. Um, eventually that will be assigned to a token, and you'll move that token around the board. Okay. I will take Caspian. And Good I'll choice. take River. Okay. All great choices. I don't know what the hell I'm going to pick. Um, I'm going to go with Fawn. Fawn? I yeah. like it. Mm. Why not? <laughs> I don't think I've picked that one yet. Which I should mention, I've started this game about a hundred times and never finished it. <laughs> oh. oh, that's the worst. Uh, knock, on, knock on wood. Well, we're going to finish this one, come hell or high water. <laughs> yeah. Selfishly, I might have set this up just so I could have an actual playthrough of this game. <laughs> oh, that's so selfish. That's such a terrible <laughs> thing to do. Oh, <laughs> my. <laughs> there is, oh. Thank you, Abby. <laughs> so, should we... Uh, what about the titles? Titles next? Yes, yeah. titles, titles the next thing that we pick. So, you're going to choose, um, hold on, let me just refresh my memory. <sighs> so you're going to choose a title, you'll see that the title, um, uh, is associated with, like, an, a place of Ravenhall, of Barleytown, etc. Um, 
people can be from the same place, so you don't have to worry, like, oh, I wanted to be from Stormguard, shoot, somebody already took that. You just can't pick the same type. Hmm. I will be Caspian, Fox of Mistwood. Because mm. I like the title Fox, because mm -hmm. that's just an animal, and mm -hmm. I like that. Heck yeah. Mm. I like um, either Air or Knight of Stormguard. Uh, I, th I think I'll go Knight. Knight of Stormguard. Heck yeah, that's awesome. Love it. <laughs> Abby, if you see anything that jumps to you, you're more than welcome to. Um, Golem. Mm. Golem jumps out at me. Golem of Ravenhall? Plus, yeah, plus the name just sounds <laughs> nice. Mm hmm. Hmm. This is tough. Um. <laughs> I'm gonna pick Raven of Ravenhall. Ooh. Which nice is beautiful. The first time I played this, somebody else that I was playing with picked Raven of Ravenhall. I was like, I can never pick that now. But I'm doing it this time. But yeah, I loved that choice. I was like, oh, that's so cool. So I'm gonna Raven, be. Raven of Ravenhall. Mm -hmm. Fog, Raven, Raven of Ravenhall. Fog, Raven of Ravenhall. I don't know what that was, I'm sorry. <laughs> You, you have to speak like that now for the rest of the game. You've, you've chosen your character voice. Oh no, you're from Ravenloft. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's down the hill from Ravenloft. It's 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 like it's a loft, so it's actually like up in like an empty space in the top of the barn, sort of thing. Yeah. Is yeah. that actually what it is? It sounds way cooler than it really is. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Yeah. Awesome. I love, I love all of our choices. Okay, so last but not least is up at the top. You see these things that look like coins. So I mentioned the physical version of this game earlier. In the physical version, these are actual metal coins, double-sided. Um, but because of, with the benefit of digital technology, uh, we can choose, you know, I guess you do this with the physical one too, but whatever. You're going to choose uh, a token to represent your character. Uh, do we just, just take one, or do we um, put them on the journal? Tell me what one you want, and then I will assign you, uh, to that token. Or assign that token to you. I'm gonna take this one. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I'm thinking of this one. Alright, hold on, let me do this one at time. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Sorry. <laughs> oh, you're good. Uh, so, Anthony's Caspian. No, no, no. Anthony's Justice. I'm Justice, yeah. It's your player name. Justice. There we go. Uh, and then Abby wanted the lit candle. Yes. Okay. And Abby is River Golem of Ravenhall. Yeah. Okay. I apologize for all the shaking and the noise. The cats are having a cat. The cats are having a cat. They're, they're being cats. Yeah. Um. I think I will pick... I... I kind of want that raven, but you are a raven from raven from raven something something, so would you like the <laughs> raven Knox? I'm gonna go last because this is like my fourth time playing this game. I'll do the egg. Okay. The, the, the babe, the not yet born bird. I love it. Mm, all right. There you go. Oops, hold on. There we go. Perfect. Um, and I think I'm actually gonna take... Hmm. I think I'm gonna take the body of water. Nice. Ooh. Like the ocean or the river uh -huh. one? The ocean with the birds Ooh. on top? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sweet. 
Okay. Awesome. Woo! I'm getting excited. Okay. So, um, that's it. Our character creation is done. Everyone should have control of their tokens. Um, I think we have one final step left before we actually start playing. Okay. So, um, we have all of our characters. Another character, since this is actually who we're journeying with, is the Magus. Um, the Magus doesn't belong to anyone, belongs to all of us. We don't know who or what the Magus is. We don't know if they're human, we don't know if they're not. We don't know their gender or anything about them. We can make that up as we play the game. Mm -hmm. That also means we get to assign them a token because we are traveling with the Magus because the Magus is dying, because magic is dying. So we are escorting them or maybe not even escorting them. We're just traveling with them for some reason to take them back to the land of uh, Umbra. So, what token do we want the Magus represented by? I know we only have technically technically one left, but since we have all sides of the tokens available to us, I, mean, I think we can pick whatever one we want. I really like the dead tree, because yeah. the Magus is yeah. 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 I was thinking the dead tree, too. Perfect. Yeah, and also that within each, like, technically we've taken each of the coins. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's symmetry. Maybe we can get that tree to bloom at the end. Ah. All right. I love it. I love everything about what's happening right now. Tree of Gondor situation. <laughs> tree of Gondor. I was thinking the um, the silver and gold trees of uh, Valinor. Mm. Or that pink tree in Skyrim in that one town. Like, pink tree. What? I'm going to go down a rabbit hole. I'm just going to stop. I have no idea what he was talking about. And that's so okay. Neither do I. <laughs> Me and Abby are like, the <laughs> We heard Lord of the Rings. I don't know. <laughs> Never read it. Okay, cool. So our next step is we're going to move to our first location, which is Ravenhall. Uh, and I'll go ahead and move the Magus over. Uh, you all should have control over your tokens if you don't let me know. Perfect. Oh, sweet. I'm going to hang out right there. There we go. So... This is how we're going to play the game going forward. You'll notice that Ravenhall has an illustration. Our tokens are kind of in the way of it. Um, but uh, Ravenhall has, a, has an illustration to give, us, to give us sort of a sense of what the location is. Uh, it's all very sort of loose, though. Um, you'll notice also around the location are uh, titles, the things in red, with little sort of descriptions or prompts or whatever beneath them. So every location is going to have a prompt uh, and, a, and a slight description. The way that we play this game is you you move your token to a location, to one of these prompts, and you create a scene based off that. It's super <laughs> loose. Um, the whole thing is super collaborative. Let's say, for example, I wanted to take Fawn to the scrying pool to reflect on why Fawn serves the Magus. Um, that can, the scrying pool can be anything I want. Why I serve the Magus can be anything that I want. If we want to invite other players into the scenes, which I encourage you to do, um, you just ask that person. I can say, hey, Anders, do you mind being in the scene with me? Um, here's kind of what I'm suggesting. Maybe Fawn and um, Caspian are. Maybe, maybe cast me. I don't know. They're they're there together for some reason. Do you mind being in the scene with me, and then we can play off each other? Alternatively, I can say, "Hey, uh, Abby, do you mind playing like just sort of like a person in the scene that's like someone that lives at Ravenhall, kind of like a, just a regular townsfolk?" Or I can just say, "Anthony, I want you to be in the scene with me. I don't have any ideas." And you can say, "Okay, well, how about this?" Um, same thing with the Magus. Um, since we all effectively are sharing the role of the Magus, you can say, hey, I want to have a scene with the Magus. Um, does anyone want to play? Or I would like so-and-so to play the Magus with me in this scene. Uh, you'll notice the Rose Garden scene, our uh, prompt has the little um, plus signs next to it. Those are traits that you will add to your character. Um, so you'll select one of the traits listed, and then you'll describe how that is true 
um, about one of the characters. It can actually be yours or someone else's. Um, if you make it about yourself, you'll actually add it to your character sheet. You just put in like the bio section or whatever. Um, if you make it about somebody else, they would add it to their sheet. This comes into play a little bit more later, but there's a couple locations that have these traits. That's kind of the main bread and butter of it right now. Does anyone have questions? No, I don't think so. Okay. Yeah. Does does uh do one of these story prompts jump out at you to jump in and create a scene around? I might be interested. Um, I would like to go to the scrying pools. Um, I'm open to seeing who would want to be the mages in this situation. No one wants to play the mages at all. Um, I will do it. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, so, Justice, um, Knight of Stormguard, is uh, going to the scrying pools, and he's going to go to the mages and, and ask them. Uh, uh, I would appreciate if I could uh, get a uh, get a look at my home. Um, I want I want to see the king. The, the Magus wears this hood despite the, the kind of warmer weather of the season um, still wears this like thick heavy hood that obscures their face uh, away from the sun so you can't really see an expression that they make um, but a delicate hand sort of curls around the top of a staff um, and they do sort of in response to your request their hand sort of grips a little bit more tightly around this staff um, and they peer over at the scrying pool. What do you wish to see? It's been um, many months since I've seen my king. He's sick as I've talked with you about. I need to see how he is. I, I, will, not, I will not be able to rest if I don't know how he's doing, I, I, I would appreciate it. I can try. And the Magus moves just a little bit closer towards the scrying pool. Picks up their, uh, their staff. Holds it over the scrying pool, taps the tip of it gently into the water so that ripples uh, move outwards. Uh, and for a brief moment, there's the image of your uh, the thing that you requested to see. Um, it's for some description, Justice has a massive scar kind of right over one portion of his head, and um, it's heavy, and there's no. Um, hair there, it's sort of like faded, like a fade. And on the other side is this braided red hair. Um, he has sort of tan skin, a little, little bit um, a stout jaw. Um, uh, he looks a little bit older, but also um, still kind of, you know, in, in, in his uh, in his 30s. Um, and what Justice sees is um, the queen at the side of, of um, this uh, of 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 uh, his of of her husband's bed, and he's still sick. There are doctors tending to him, but it seems like everyone's a little bit gloomy and not liking the chances of it. Um, uh, Justice is just staring into that um, scrying pool pensively, almost uh, like longing. Um, he left the kingdom. In, not not in exile, but he, he sort of deserted so he could find a cure. Um, he, he left the protection of the king to save his life, basically. And so uh, Justice is a sort of continuously staring and kind of like closes his eyes and nods to the mages. I, I've seen enough. Thank you. And he turns around and starts walking away. Uh, yeah, the Magus picks their staff up, um, places it on the ground, and what you don't see 
is as you turn and, and walk away is that the magus shudders um and uh brings a mouth a hand to their mouth uh, as if to stifle uh, a cough of some kind is that the end of our scene uh yeah that's it so all right awesome Who else would like to to uh, to go? I think I'd like to do a scene with Caspian in the Rose Gardens with uh, anyone who would want to go pick flowers with them. Sure, River will. No. I, I think I see uh, Caspian sort of walking and maybe has like a small dagger and is just carefully cutting off individual sort of roses and putting them into a pouch, trying to collect different colors, being very careful of the thorns. Um, and then they turn towards river and sign because uh, Caspian um, is deaf and just signs, this is beautiful. River signs very clumsily. They're learning, but they're not they're not great yet. Um really is. And tries to just like picks flowers with by hand, does not seem to care about the thorns. They're just they just take a rose, grab it by the thorns, pull out, and put it into their own pouch. Just a few. Once in a while. Um, after taking a few and starting to sort of thread them together to start to try to construct a, like, what it looks like might become a flower crown, Caspian's going to look over again and, do you think the mages will like this? Yes. Yes. They seem very sad. Very sad for a while. I think if they were happy, they could do more magic. Very, very yes. I'm going to kind of hold up the crown now and try to fit it on River's head to see if it like fits like a normal person's head. It's probably awkwardly small and kind of like bunched up at the top. It doesn't really go down the way it should. A little bit. <laughs> but River is just smiling. It's, it's good. That can be yours. I can make more. Thank you go back to picking more flowers. I'll just probably do this for most of the afternoon until I make them for everyone. Different colors and things. River helps as long as they can. It tries to keep theirs on as long as possible. Scene? That is so adorable, I'm sorry. It is. Oh, I was like, so adorable. I know. So, um, so, uh, someone has to take one of the traits in the Rose Garden. Beautiful, legendary, or fierce. So, oh, right. Yeah. Um, so is... How about... <laughs> so, go ahead. Uh, I was just gonna ask, is, uh, are you giving it to... Uh, is, is Caspian assuming one of those traits? Are you giving it to River? Or I think entirely? River looks very beautiful in their flower crown. Yes. If yes. River would like the beautiful trait. Yes, that sounds wonderful. I love it. <laughs> oh, now you see why I love this game! <laughs> so pretty. <laughs> it's too precious. I'm trying to take notes and my cat is chewing on my pen. <laughs> I'm vaguely taking, I'm just taking mental notes because I did not think that far ahead into my life choices. Uh, 
You can uh, you can always take notes in your character sheet too. If you want to put those in there. Oh yes. Um... You, this you don't. I wouldn't. I don't want to say you don't need notes. Obviously, it's up to you if you want to take them. This is not a notes dependent game. If that makes sense. It's not like D and D, which is like a puzzle you gotta solve. You know. But if you yeah. want to take notes, an easy way to do that would be in your character sheet. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and jump into. Uh, into the scrying pool, I think. Not literally. Um, take a dip. <laughs> yeah, just take a quick splash. <laughs> not not super offensive at all or anything. <laughs> it's only religious religious location, you know. No big deal. Yeah, no big know. whatever. <laughs> Everyone does it. Um. So, uh, yeah, I think I think I'm gonna take the scene by myself. Um. Fawn, uh, wears the same clothing as the rest of the ravens of Ravenhall. Um, I think that maybe Ravenhall has acted as sort of like an informal home for the Vegas, and the ravens are this sort of, like, holy, not, not holy in, like, a religious sense, but this sort of dedicated protective group um, that live at Ravenhall and learn from the Magus um, and, you know, protect them from whatever threats. And so I think the fawn wearing these, uh, these, these heavy clothes, uh, there's, like, feathery, like, pauldrons, almost, uh, and a long head cloak, um, and light armor in the form of, like, bracers and stuff like that. Um, I think she looks down at her reflection in the scrying pool and reflects back on the first time she met the Magus as a small child. Um, and uh, she had been brought to Ravenhall and other kids, other similar children that had been brought to Ravenhall were making fun of her and teasing her. And the Magus came up uh, and uh, basically put a stop to the bullying uh, and began to give more one-on-one -on -one attention to Fawn. Um, and so the Magus became almost like a mentor of sorts, but still distant, because the Magus is, you know, is magical whatever. Um, so I think that uh, that's what she reflects on as she looks down at, at her face. Um, and before she walks away from the scrying pool, she begins removing some of the heavier gear uh, in anticipation of the journey that is ahead of them. And that's it. Very wonderful. Yeah. Um, I would actually like um, to maybe see what that flower crown situation would be like with um um uh uh, uh caspian and river even maybe even fawn if like if we can just do like a whole like giving out all those uh, flower crowns yeah. that's up to you guys i'm just yeah. you know, throwing it out there yeah yeah i'm not opposed to that yeah um okay. Yeah, I think that, um, I think on the way from the scrying pool, maybe toward, like, back towards her quarters in, like, the main Ravenhall building, that she passes by the Rose Gardens, uh, and sees, um, Caspian sort of, like, making these flower crowns. Mm-hmm. Um... I think I would try to make them colored in ways that are appropriate to my friends. Um, I, Anders, don't know very much about color meetings and flowers, <laughs> but we're playing on the internet and the internet's a great thing. So um, I think I'm going to give uh, 
the mages um, a, a light pink rose flower crown for both admiration and also sympathy. Um, I'm going to give uh, a yellow rose crown to Fawn for both friendship and new beginnings. I, uh, I think I'm going to give a, a red flower crown, like bright red roses to justice because that is courage and respect and passion. And I think a white flower crown for um, River, for uh, innocence and purity and silence, because we sort of seem to have a quiet friendship that I really like. Just pass those out to everyone. <laughs> I love it. It's so beautiful. <laughs> Justice looks at the flower crown that um, was made for him, and there's a small, peeking smile. He's, he's, he's kind of tall and, and a little quiet, but m more looks focused. But he's, you get a, a smile out of him. Um, looks to um, Fawn. Uh, you are a raven of, of Ravenhall, yes? Can, do you um, teach any language, sign language? Uh, uh, um, uh, I think Fawn at this point kind of looks helplessly over at the Vegas. <laughs> uh, <laughs> because... Uh, Oh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, because uh, I think Fawn would have a rudimentary enough understanding of sign language to be able to communicate with um, Caspian, hmm. uh, but not enough where she would feel comfortable teaching it to somebody else. And anything that she's learned has been during her time at, at, at Ravenhall or from the Magus directly. So she sort of looks over at the Magus like, for help. <laughs> Like, help! I don't, I don't know how to teach sign language! <laughs> I, I, I would appreciate just saying thank you. I, I, I would love to learn, but if we do not have time, you know, maybe something on the road. Uh, I, yeah, no, um, yeah, I can, I can definitely, yeah, so, and then, I don't know shit about sign language. Thank you. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> she, uh, she, uh, she will sit and just teach like the most basic of phrases. Hello, how are you? Can I help? Thank you. Goodbye. Sorry. You're welcome. I hope you're doing okay. Like just the most rudimentary of things. Um, and then she also will kind of draw out the directions because it's a lot already. So she will sort of like draw out like, okay, this is what this this is what you should be signing to say this word. Uh, into like a sort of like short sack of papers and give it to justice uh I, I hope i hope this helps maybe maybe we can learn maybe i can teach you um more as as we're traveling we're gonna have a lot of time so um if, yeah thank you Caspian is just kind of watching all of this with a happy smile that friends are both accepting and like learning and just, just very happy over here just watching <laughs> from the sidelines. Mm -hmm. River is trying to like mentally like I know that one is like know that one know that because <laughs> even not signing their speech is a little clumsy. Mm. Very small and simple and basic. What, uh, if, if I may, what does River look like? 
River looks generally kind of um at a, at one at a in, at a quick glance they do not appear to be they appear to just be somewhere in between the genders like just kind of their own separate gender with short um pale hair and there is something about their eyes that tells you something went wrong like one of them is slightly clouded but they see fine it's just something went wrong in the last five years they, they look very pale and thin and clumsy and like a stiff breeze could knock them over <laughs> Um, technically that puts us all in the Rose Garden, so... Yeah. Um, since, um... Uh... Since, uh, Anthony is who started us sort of in the scene, um, I think it would be your choice to dish out a, uh, a, um, a trait. Beautiful, legendary, or fierce. To anyone, really, that's in the scene. Uh, I don't know what your audio situation is, so if you want to type it in the Zoom chat, then you can. I think we can kind of do whatever we want. It doesn't say in the... So, Anthony has said that he thinks that uh, Justice would give Beautiful to Caspian. Um, uh, he wants to know if we can give more than one trait. Um, because this is such like a loosely played game, it's more about the story than about the rules. You know, whatever helps us tell the story that we want to tell um, works. So, if you want to give a trait to somebody else, then yeah, go for it. Um, I think what we'll do, since Anthony is having some audio issues, we're going to go ahead and go on a quick break. Because we've only got about an hour left, I think? Yeah. Less than an hour left to gameplay. Uh, so this is as good a time as I need to go on a quick break. Uh, and then we'll bounce back um, and see what else we want to do uh, hanging around in Ravenhall. Um, and then where else our story takes us. So we'll be back shortly, guys.
today uh, because of the game that Anders and I are both in immediately after this uh, and I need to set up stuff in preparation for that but after our first games we should be able to sort of hit them a little bit closer uh, but we'll sort of work those details out, out as we keep playing this game um, so with the time that we have left we're still in Ravenhall uh, Abby I think you said that you had a scene in mind while we we're on break yes yes I did it's just River going to the bridge. All right. There, after all the adorableness, they go to the river, they look down, and the face they see is not the face they have. It's the face they remember. Back when their hair was darker, their eyes were clear and dark. They remember. They think about they think about why they're here and why they are a golem. They're a golem because the Magus saved them. 
they don't remember what it was going to happen. They just know something happened. They like a part of their memory is just gone. But they know they remember the Magus saved them. They remember that they were made whole again. And they that is why they don't talk so well. That's why their mind is slower. But they're like, I've still got my mind. I can still do everything. I'm just like slightly off kilter of where I should, of where I was. But I'm still me. I'm still good. And like the face as they're like remembering, as they're thinking, like mentally it just ripples from old to new. And they're just like, okay. And then they readjust the the flower crown to make sure it still looks good and smile and they're just like I'm good still good and then they just walk back it's like okay all's good all's good very good Those two precious. <laughs> uh, does anyone else want to do anything? Raven Hall. Maybe the menagerie. I think Justice would go to the menagerie. Um, um, I kind of imagine the menagerie is um, like a library, maybe where the ravens sort of study or, or collect knowledge, like old artifacts. That's cool. Uh, I'm not sure. So, you know, um, he's kind of striding along, um, peering through many of these books. Um, he's not particularly a, a, a scholarly sort, but, you know, ever since he left Stormguard, he's been rapidly trying to learn the fundamentals of magic, cure, potential um, cures for magical illnesses, um, things like that. And he comes across um, in a in a sort of pla like with a plaque and in a glass case, um, a uh, sort of um, an orb, kind of broken and shattered, and kind of held up in a uh, metal rod. And so he kind of flashes back to when he last saw um, magic at work. Um, Abby, you're you're, uh, you're tapping a little loud. Oh no! Sorry, I just. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. It's okay. I was just trying to... Um, but he's remembering um, a battlefield. Um, storm guard against an enemy um, that he hasn't thought about for a very long time. And um, an orb very much like that one. Um, swirling with blue and hues and it launching out into friendly forces and decimating uh, his friends, his family. He was born, sort of born into service to the king and um, it, it, fighting his battles, protecting his life. That has always been sort of his, um, his, his, his purpose in life. He was named Justice. He brings the king's justice. Um, so in these battles, you just remember seeing these these balls thrown into crowds and exploding with uh, blue light. Um, and suddenly he's in the library again after you know feeling kind of the, the deafening impacts of uh, these, these weapons. And they haven't been used for a long time. They're probably um, banned for certain for for obvious reasons. And he's sort of staring at it for for a very long time perhaps for you know um the rest of the day at this at this object and all the memories they start it's awesome love it uh anything else you want to do in raven hall i'm good yeah all right, we're gonna move along. So, this brings us to another element of the game. That I'm going to, again, refresh my memory on. Um, 
So. During this scene, we actually moved the Magus. Um, kind of along the, da the dashed line that marks our path. Uh, and someone will assume the role of the Magus in this moment and describe um, uh, the new location on oh, the story prompt of the location. So uh, you'll notice, uniquely, Ravenhall is the name of the location, but it's the only one that doesn't have a story prompt because it's where we start. But our next location, the Oak Hills, the story prompt for that is the ending of summer. And whoever wants to assume the role of the Magus will describe sort of the location or even the journey from our previous location to the next one from the perspective of the Magus. I am not going to take the role of the Magus because I want someone else to. So who would like to take on the role of the Magus and get, send us to the Oak Hills and the ending of summer? I'll do it. Alrighty. As our group leaves um, Raven Hall and begins to make their way towards their ultimate destination of Umbra, um, after a few days travel, the air begins to take on the slightest of chills. And it's a very nice reprieve from sort of the stifling heat that summer brought. And for the next few perfect weeks, there's this crispness. And the, the flat farmland of Ravenhall begins to slowly undulate into these rolling hills that begin to become decorated in oranges and reds and browns of of forests growing sort of like on the horizon, the edge of our view. Um, it begins to take a little longer to travel because it takes more energy to go up and down and up and down rather than to just move forward. But it also feels right to take longer. Um, as winter begins to come, everyone kind of slows down just a little bit, this sort of no need to rush, the sense of we can take it a little easier sort of comes over the group as we make our way into the Oak Hills. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll go ahead and move our tokens now to the next location. Mm -hmm. And we pretty much continue the same as we did in Ravenhall. Uh, we have another location that has the attributes, making camp. Um, but we just continue play the same way that we did in Ravenhall. I think. The, oh, God, sorry. I I just have a question. Mm -hmm. Um. It so it's it's making camp and. Uh, Dawn, Firelight, and the Road? Are those our... Mm -hmm. Harper's Road, okay. Making Camp with Firelight, and not Dawn. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry. I no, just want to make sure I had the right ones. No, you're good. Some, sometimes it's a little confusing because they get squished together. So that's totally fair. Hmm. I think Justice would... Uh, I would like Justice to maybe interact with, with River a little bit um, at Dawn. Mm. I think... Yeah. If, if, yeah, if you're down. Yeah, down. Okay. Justice has been curious about River um, this entire time. And since, they're, since they're a golem, he's curious about how they sleep, how they wake up. Do they, do they sleep? Do they wake up? Do they have a morning ritual? Yeah. River just kind of it just has a no just sleeps like everyone else wakes up stretches all the joints all of the joints and just kind of has a tendency to stare at the sun for like three seconds longer than you should on a regular basis 
and it's just kind of a constant, like every morning, you if you watch them, like long enough, they'll wake up, they'll stretch, they'll pop all the joints, and then they'll stare at the sun. Well, like exactly three seconds longer than you should every time. And it's just their morning ritual. And it's just a thing that they've been doing for the last five years. Justice would serve around the same time. He's sort of um, an early bird, and he polishes his, his, his equipment, he sharpens his blades, and he's going to sort of, sort of like occasionally noticing the constant staring at the sun for um, that amount of time, and you know, eventually he, he gets a little curious. Why do you do that? Make sure eyes look. Make sure I look. You are a curiosity, indeed. Um, that first time. I, 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 I <laughs> what? Not first time. Not first time asked. Oh, I know. I heard, I heard a lot. Um, uh, loud, loud noise. But yeah, no. Oh. It's, it's good. Um, uh, of course, I, I don't need to pry. I'm just, I'm just curious. I imagine many people are unfamiliar with this sort of confrontation. Many people. Hmm. It's normal. Well, you're welcome. I notice you're capable of talking to Caspian. Yes is learning, am learning. Is he uh, teaching you? Little Magus to also own initiative. Mm. Do you have a, a book that you, you, you use? Leaflets and one book. Just they pull out this like very old looking, like it looks older than it is book, and it's just heavily leafed through, and it's just a very basic like system. And mm. they're like basis. If you don't mind me, maybe borrowing it in the mornings, I would. Well, I, I I would like to, to learn progressively. If we are on this journey together. Uh, it's important for me to learn uh, new things. Is is good, and they, they just pass over the book. They're just like, here you go. Thank here you go. And for the remaining of their morning of his morning rituals, he will take a little bit of time and um, read new sections, familiarize himself with sections he's already read. Um, and sort of start practicing that. So, you, so it'll it'll be more than. Um, very basic statements. Thank you. I love that we have this like clear like narrative thread already being formed so early on about learning sign language. Uh, all part of the journey, mm -hmm. yeah. especially for Justice. I think I will do a scene Caspian on Harper's Road, um, which is who you left behind. Just Caspian. Um, I think as we're traveling, just long days of walking, you know, they are reminded of their childhood in the Mistwood, living with people who did not have a sedentary home. Um, the family that Caspian grew up with traveled through the woods. They were merchants, they sold things, and they never, they never had a house. They always lived out of the back of their cart or in the homes of others. And Caspian remembers a, a childhood of music and joy and 
just very, very happy people who loved the sort of simple life that they had. Um, and they remember their father teaching them how to throw daggers and carve arrows out of wood and sort of make everything on their own, how to hunt and how to support themselves. And they remember slowly losing the ability to hear that music that accompanied their childhood over time. And though they remember losing the ability to hear it, they never forgot what it sounded like. So often as we're sort of traveling along this road, you'll hear Caspian sort of humming songs or um, tapping over by the fireplace sticks, making rhythms and sounds. And it sounds like someone who loves and knows music like deep down it can't quite hear the music they're making anymore, um, but it still has this very sort of beauty to it and this loved nature to it um, as they're traveling. And that's it. Very wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, everything has been so awesome. It has. It's so touching. I know. That's, that's this whole game. It's so the whole game awesome. is so touching. <laughs> I'm trying not to like say that all the time, but you guys, you, you all are gonna learn so fast. Um. Does anyone want to go next? Hmm. Um, hmm. I'd say making camp would be nice for maybe Justice and Mom. So that's one with um, the traits. So that means you'll either assign a trait to me or yourself. Okay. Or I guess any character, really, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Justice is um, making camp. Um, he looks a little um, hardy. He use, he's using a lot of um, some of the needles of the oak hills um, as part of the fire. They're kind of dry, drying out as. Um, summer is ending and things are getting colder and you know leaves are starting to fall making for example um sort of use of for like for fire making um it looks to maybe fawn um have you uh left raven hall at all in your life uh, well technically um uh, So it's kind of in reverse where I didn't really leave it, but I had left and then I had been brought to it, if that makes sense. Um, so um, I uh, I wasn't born in, in Ravenhall. I was brought there um, later, but I, it's, it's I'm, uh, sometimes, you know, if I need to go run an errand or something, I'll leave. Uh, why? Well, I m m meant to ask, do you need help with your tent? Oh, <laughs> uh, that's super nice. Um, but thankfully that's actually something that we learn back in Ravenhall. Because you, oh, you never know when you're um, going to need to set off on a long journey. Um, and sure enough, Fawn expertly goes forth and raises their own tent, no problem. Uh, starts to help you collect the correct sort of like firewood and kindling um, and grab stones uh, to place around the fire um, yeah um, uh, do, you, do you need help setting up your tent? 
Uh, no, I mean, forgive me if I assumed. I just, uh, uh, some, some of us assume scholars stay locked inside of their libraries. Well, some do for sure. Um, I, I mean, I I like books. Books are great. Um, you know, I, I I can read a book on fiction and history that talk about really neat sounding adventures. Uh, but. Uh, they also sound super dangerous uh and people die in those stories all the time um so it's never really appealed to me to sort of go forth and fight monsters but um i i you know ser serving serving the magus is kind of kind of what um uh, is a big part of my life now so you know um yeah i know a lot of stuff but i also know how to put up a tent and you know, if, if I have to wield a sword, I can. Good. We might expect trouble along the way. Oh, oh okay. Well, um... I, I, I mean, these are the open roads. There are highwaymen. I imagine the news that the mages, Magus have left Ravenall has not gone unheard. Spies. Captains. Maybe even monsters. I'm not sure. I'm not sure exactly what the Magus is doing, or how the, the magic is dying, so he's unwell. He made a promise to me, and I, and I swear that I would keep him safe in my life. And I mean that. Yeah. So hopefully not. Yeah, um, yeah, they're pretty cool. Um, Magus done, done a lot of stuff for a lot of people. I think that's... <laughs> Maybe that's why... The mage is so unwell. I don't know. Nobody really knows. Um, He's given a lot. Hasn't received much in return. Oh, makes sense. I, I don't know. I don't think that's true. I mean, what what do you give in return for for providing the amount of help the mage has to so many people? I mean, what are you supposed to do? Give them coin? You know, that's, you know, I, me and the other ravens have basically given our lives to make sure that, that Magus lives comfortably and is cared for. And I think that's all that they could really want. You know, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not, I'm not the Magus, so, but... If magic is tied to the mages, perhaps he pushed himself far. He's a river. Some people are rivers. They just give and give and give. And this journey is us giving back. But that's just how I see it. I imagine he has a they have other things in mind. Um, and He's um, kind of lighting the fire now, so we can get up the stones. There we are. Uh, well, um, I'll take first watch. Oh, oh, okay, yeah. Uh, I'll take the second one. Good. Good. And. He just sort of walks away. And Vaughn just looks very perplexed because she just does not understand why Justice is so paranoid about this travel. <laughs> <laughs> He's <laughs> so paranoid, guys. Um, Justice would... Um, I, I, I'm, I, Justice would give a title to Vaughn, or a trait to Vaughn. Uh, Vaughn. I would, I, I'm, it's hard to discern, though. Would you like cunning in that situation or kind? You, you tell me. It's your treat to give. Mm. It's based on your perspective. Kind. Alright, I'll take it. Concerned with the well-being of me, and, you know, um, hopeful and helpful, so. 
I'd say kind. Awesome. Uh, I think that is as good a time as any to uh, go ahead and start wrapping up our game. Um, so we have some time for the changeover for next one. <laughs> In 20-ish, 20, well, less than 30 minutes. <laughs> oh, goodness. I thought it was at 6. Wait, hold on. I thought our games were back-to-back. -back. I thought this one went for 3 hours. Wait, how long have we been playing? One and a half. You know what yeah. it is? No, you know what it is, you guys? <laughs> it's because it starts at 3. No, wait. So, hold on. Sorry. It's because I'm getting my time zones confused. That's why. Oh, yeah. Time zones. Time uh, zones. That's what screwed me up. Time zones. Ooh, Nelly. Time zones. Well, we're not going to wrap up. We're going to keep playing. <laughs> yeah. I've got to get going. <laughs> Yes, we are going to uh, bid farewell to Abby, so we're actually going to go on another quick break so that I can uh, adjust the webcams. Um, Abby, thank you so much for playing. Um, uh, uh, we'll kind of figure out between now and then when the uh, what um, River was up to. Um, but before you, you head out, do you want to sort of give us like your favorite moment so far? That could be a, a moment, like a, a role-play moment, or it could be an element of the game. It could be anything you want. The rose crowds. Yeah. One hundred percent the rose crowds. They were just so wonderful. That was good stuff. Yeah. All right. Well, on that note, I'm gonna cut to a break real quick, just so I can make some adjustments to the webcams, uh, and then we'll be back in less than five minutes. Okay.
um, uh, without an Abby. Um, but we will figure out what is up with her character between our games. Uh, so we're still in the Oak Hills. Uh, do we want to do any more scenes here? <laughs> I like to think good. Nice. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, I think I'm good too, actually. Sweet. Um, all right. Who wants to be the Magus? Besides I'll me. Be which sounds right, which is you. <laughs> okay. Mm. So, so now we're going into Barley Town. Yeah, so you will sort of describe, you know, uh, the journey or our new location or a combination of both. Preferably at least a combination of both, uh, if not just the new location, from the perspective of the Magus using the name of the location, Barley Town, and the prompt, which is the hospitality of the Barley Lord. Our journey goes um, quietly through the Oak Hills, um, a sort of um, tranquil, easy stroll into fall as we head closer and closer to the next major sort of province of Barley Town. And when the Magus and um, his, his band arrives there, they feel sort of, I don't know, maybe um, just the eyes of, of sort of um, intrigued and um, uh, maybe just some disturbed peasant uh, peasants, you know, they're wagon carts along the dirt road. Um, they pass by a couple farmsteads at this point. And when they enter um, a sort of high hall of the Barley Lord, they feel a little bit more at ease. Um, the Barley Lord was expecting them. Upstretched arms, sort of a very jolly man, kind of a little plump. Um, and it seems like the Magus and the Barley Lord are quite familiar with each other. Barley Lord has sort of like, um, it's sort of balding and he has a crown of hair right, right around here. Um, and so they seem to be catching up. And Magus looks a little bit happier. He looks like, despite his illnesses, he feels welcome at home here. He has spent years here. Um, just by the knowing glance between him and some of the members of the Wily Lord's court. And um, I'd say um, that sort of eases the tension of their arrival here. I think that's it. Alright, awesome. Um, so, I want to settle... Um, our pronouns, our pronouns, the pronouns for our magus, magus, whatever. Um, it seems like we're kind of bouncing around between they and he. Do we want them to be they, he, or they, they, them, or do we have a preference either way? I'm done with they, he. That'd be fine. Um, All right, we'll do they, he, then. This is always part of the sort of like exploration around the Magus mm -hmm. is who's going to drop the first pronoun. Uh, and then how yeah. consistent do they stay? Yeah. Uh, I always tend to gravitate towards they because the Magus is like this mysterious character to me every time that I play this game. <laughs> I think it's, I think I just, in my head, I imagine like a Decker Kane sort of character, and so I went for the, the he, and I was like, no, he's, they, they are very, see, there you go. They are very mysterious. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I think I got everyone's pronouns showing up. Great. Um, Alright, awesome. So we are all now in Barley Town. Go ahead and move your tokens to Barley Town. Barley Town. Barley Town. Good old Barley Town. Town of the Barley. Town of Barley. <laughs> town of Barley Town. Barley Come back here. Oh my god. <laughs> I guess in here, I don't think there's a family to her. Sure. You tell them, Boom Howard. 
<laughs> I have family that talks like that for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You're okay. <laughs> uh, 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 yeah, okay. So, same, same sitch, scenes and prompts. We don't have any traits this time. I have one. Um, I think Justice would go to the Abbey. He hasn't been to a church in a long time. Um, and he is sort of um, pensive, a little reluctant. And as he goes into the Abbey, he goes into um, a sort of confession booth. And he waits for uh, the pastor to go inside the other, the other end. Um, and he measurably starts pouring out um, a secret he's been keeping for a long time. He has uh, been um, greatly worried over someone's health. But more importantly, there is a connection with this person that they have been keeping to themselves for a very long time. So long, in fact, that it's become natural for them to bury it and leave it under um, the pretenses of loyalty and um, fervent approval. Um, and he feels so much remorse for being forced to leave this person in order for them to find a way to better health. And he is very vague on the details. And it seems like the pastor is knowing somewhere, or somehow, no, no, somehow knowing that this is um, about someone that he should speak about. And there's, there's a measure of understanding and forgiveness, but the pastor instructs that he should start forgiving himself more than asking for forgiveness from the world. And measurably he nods and walks back into the, the keep of the, uh, the Barley Lord. Uh, I am hearing a little bit of feedback from somebody. Uh, let me mute myself, see how that goes. It's kind of hard to tell because it feels sporadic. I don't know. Oh, I see. Okay. That was me because apparently it didn't hook up with my headphones. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I am so sorry. No, you're okay. <laughs> There we go. Now it's, We're doing now it's, it. now it's in my animals. <laughs> We're doing it live. <laughs> we'll do it live. Mm -hmm. uh, which, no, it was, it was great that Anders asked because I realized I had uh, Roll20 playing in Roll20 music playing in two different browsers. <laughs> I was like, oh, I don't need that. <laughs> yeah, I don't need that at all. Mm -mm. The one is fine. I think One's it, fine. I think it sounded one fine. One is but, fine. Yeah. Uh, awesome. I would yeah. like to take the, I'm saying this wrong, I think, the Magus. I don't know, whatever, I give up. <laughs> I, I would like to take the Magus shopping in the farmer's market. <laughs> I love that. Um, do you want anyone to play the Magus in the scene with you, or do you just want to oh, sure. be the Magus? Will you play the Magus, Nox? Sure. Heck yeah, I will. Um... There's very much a sort of excited, um, childlike energy to Caspian in the market. Very much like holding the magus's hand and like going to stalls and very like sort of quickly exploring sort of this fast energy. Um, 
And at one point, I think they stop at a stall that sells um, like sort of beautiful glass figurines and like vases and things. And I'm going to pick one up that looks like a small fox and hand it to the mages. Um, I think the mage just holds out a shaky, delicate hand. The other hand's still holding on to the staff that doubles as a cane. Um, uh, and at this point in the journey, I think the mage has also traveled with her hood down, revealing um, a face with strong, attractive features. Um, brown hair in a braid. Uh, bright brown eyes and their mouth pulls up into a smile um, as, the, as you hand uh, as you hand them the fox the little fox glass figurine uh, and they uh, um, they hand it back to you um, and sign with the one free hand um, as well as speak. Um, it's a fox, just like you, little Caspian. Can you teach that to them? And they just sort of like cocks their head to the side. Teach them how to sign? or how to speak oh absolutely i think caspian though that they've been doing an excellent job teaching each other have you noticed that i have noticed if it if it wasn't for you The people, all of us traveling together, wouldn't be teaching this to each other, wouldn't be connecting in this unique and special way. I'm glad you've come along on this journey. I am also glad. Will you? Can you? do the thing still? I'm going to take one of the mages' hands, sort of place it up on my cheek. The thing? Remind me if the thing is an established thing or not, because I have Ooh, garbage we make memory. It. Or are we making uh, this up right now? <laughs> You can make it up right now. <laughs> I'm kind of picturing like a something magical that the mages can do that allows Caspian to hear maybe music yeah, or something. Yeah, I, I was thinking that too. Yeah, so I, I think that you feel this sort of warmth emanate from the mages' hand uh, into your into your ears. The mages also takes one of your hands and leads you to. Um, what appears to be like a vendor of like hand drums and leans into the to the uh, sort of like shopkeeper if you will says do you mind playing a little tune my friend here uh, they can't hear but I know they can still feel music and the shopkeeper kind of looks at you smiles starts to pick up a rhythmic drum and uh, and some of the other uh, people that are like helping in the shop come around and sit at some of the other additional hand drums. And basically this sort of like marketplace drum circle kicks off. Take off my shoes. <laughs> uh, and the magus kind of gently guides you closer to a drum um, and points at your feet and takes your hands, one of your hands, and also kind of puts them closer to one of the drums and says and signs to you. Even if you can't hear the music the way that you used to, you can always feel it. 
And because you can always feel it, you can always make it anytime you want. But, as gratitude for you accompanying me on this journey, I think I can give you a little favor. And he brings his hand up and uh, again and kind of cradles your cheek. And the warmth of the magic flows to the side of your face. Uh, and you hear this sort of rhythmic, this very cheerful sound. You don't hear anything else in the marketplace at all whatsoever. None of the, none of the, like the commotion of people's chattering or sound of footsteps, or, you know, this uh, the noises that accompany a marketplace. It's solely just the beat of the drums, um, and you also can feel the vibrations of the music. Uh, you know, through the soles of your feet, palms of your hand, in your chest. Um, and the mage just, just stands there uh, for about five minutes before they pull their hand away. And the sound fades with it. But you can still feel all of those sonic vibrations coursing through you. Thank you. And they just nods and smiles, pats you on the shoulder. I want to slip away from the magus back to the glass maker and look around until I find um, something that reminds me of them. Um, it's like a, a little glass, almost star or sun and kind of makes me think of just like pure magic. I don't wanna buy it and just sort of hide it away. And then make my way back to everyone else. Uh, the mages does not come back for a while. Who knows why? Maybe he got up to something with the drum circle. I don't know, but it takes him a minute before he, he comes back to uh, to uh, to where everyone is staying. Um. Wonderful. Yeah. I think I'm gonna bounce into somewhere. Hmm. I'm gonna go to the end of the axe and the fiddle. <clears throat> Um, trying to fit my token somewhere around here. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna go by myself again. Um, uh, I don't think that Fawn, I, I think Fawn is young looking. Uh, has a lot of freckles on their face. Wears their hair short. Um, and kind of presents like an unsureness. Um, so I don't think that Fawn has ever had uh, alcohol before. And so I think the sort of <laughs> curiosity sort of overtakes her. She's she's left Raven Hall, which is you know, they don't have time for, for those sort of things. Or at least if they do it's all it's all very like, like there, there's there's no ragers at, at Raven Hall. Love wine coolers. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah, there's no one's doing shots at Raven Hall. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I think I think she decides to sort of, outside of the potential judgment of the rest of the group or even the mages themselves, heads to the heads to the end of the axe and fiddle, which, appropriate to its name, uh, this uh, you know music, uh, music of a fiddle is streaming out of the the doors and windows and uh, when she opens the door it's it's just commotion in there there's a shit ton of people all sorts of noise sort of like hum of chatter the sound of glasses clinking laughter it's a very joyous uh, environment um and um i think she sort of saddles up uh to the bar nervously um and um 
Uh, does someone want to play like the barkeep or general patrons or staff of this place? Okay. I'll do <laughs> it. it. Go for I'll it. do it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm going to get real, real, real ridiculous with it. You get mine. Okay. <laughs> um, I think there is a loud um, group of people. There's a, gr there's a group of uh, people sitting at the table. And they're all like loud, loud drum, loud drum. And it's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, let's do the Bali boys. And they clink the glasses together and um, they seem unnaturally sort of loud, and very obnoxious. Um, uh, yeah, I think, I think uh, Fod is very sort of like, <laughs> taken aback by that. Uh, I, think, <laughs> I, think, I think around this time too that the song on the fiddle changes just kind of naturally just moves into another song and everyone in this tavern uh, attached to this inn um, like this uproar like this uproar of like oh like when you know a song like when you DJ mm -hmm. plays your favorite song and they all start like almost like sea shanty style you know or like or like old Irish you know uh songs that people just sort of break out and and maybe muddle through the the um the everything else but the chorus some guys yelling hey hey do 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 better on the maiden fair and the pillars just like this just just keep doing all that yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and i think i think fawn orders a drink Orders, orders a beer. Doesn't really know what she's ordering at all. She just says, can I just have a beer? And they bring her out a beer, because she doesn't know what the hell she's doing. Uh, and it's some super dark thing, um, uh, which sort of turns turns her face when, when she takes a sip of it. But she's going to power through, because that's what everyone else here is doing. And uh, um, But I think in the middle of like all this, when one of these other songs erupts, uh, that uh, it like sparks a memory in her mind of some long distant place um, uh, flashes of like faces appear in her mind um, she can't quite put her finger on the place or the people just that there is a nostalgic almost sort of familiarity to it um but uh, everything is so fuzzy, uh, and now that this beer is kicking in, uh, you know things are now even feeling more distant. That's really hard to sort of put a pin on what this song is reminding her of. Um, uh, so yeah, I think that uh, she finishes that one beer, which is plenty enough for her because she doesn't drink, uh, and eventually stumbles back to where everyone is staying. Great. Uh, do we want to do any more scenes here? Mm. Hmm. I might be interested, but, um, uh, let's see. Maybe collaboratively, we can maybe detail Swine Hill. I think um, he'd go out there. If Caspian would, would join them with Thon, that would also be great. Um, and there's this. Oh, there's one of the cats. Um, <laughs> um, he would go there, and he seems very familiar with this particular field. Um, I'm not exactly sure how, what happened here, and I don't think that Justice remembers much, but he kind of go up to Caspian, point out there, and start signing in, in it's somewhat rudimentarily, but, um, he's, he's still getting the hang of it, but he's been doing enough that he, he knows what the words are, um, at least. 
uh, fought here a long time ago. Uh, that, that, no, it's not like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> fought here a long time ago. Uh, I'm still young, younger. Um, very frightening. Do you know how to defend yourself? Pull a dagger out of my waist and without even looking and smacks like dead into like a knot in a tree. Oh, oh my gosh, I'm so stupid. And Fawn looks over at the, at the mages who I think is also with us. I didn't, uh, when you said that they were the fox of Mistwood. I, uh, ah, uh, uh, Caspian, I'm so, J- Justice, this is the fox of Mistwood. He's totally fine. Oh. <laughs> the fox of Mistwood. The fox of Mistwood. That one is not new to me. It's not really unfamiliar. Um, start sending towards Caspian. Uh, how did you get that name? We walk up very close and shrug very intentionally with a smirk <laughs> and like turn around and begin to walk away and you see I've got your coin purse. <laughs> oh, well, he's fine. That's what awesome. you Toss it back. I take a dagger out of the wood. Countering this is payment. Justice, haven't you heard of the Mistwood? It's it, inside there. There's like super <sighs> rangery kind of people, and they're really sneaky. And I've heard, and Fawn sort of looks back at the mages to make sure they're not listening. I've heard that. Some of them can even turn into animals, which is why they have nicknames like the Fox of. I don't know if Caspian can. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, no, that's totally just a joke. Um, anyways, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, that totally makes sense. The, the people from Mistwood were s- indispensable for uh, the victory that happened here in partnership with, with Barleytown. I, I can't believe I forgot all of that. Wow. Yes, it's coming back to me. There was a battle, and we fought a large band of brigands, uh, deserters from the king's army, such as why we had to go defend Barley Town. They were our people. Um, and there was word of animals distracting these brigands, bears and foxes, and even creatures that many there had never seen before. And then, of course, uh, strikes on the shadows, arrows. But I was far on the southern flank, points over. Uh, we were taking care of a cavalry line, spears, large spears, as long as a giant. I'd say it was a very interesting battle. I was scared beyond my wits. Is that is that like a thing for you where you're just always prepared for a fight? I have to be. I was the king's bodyguard, the protector. Oh, oh wow. Okay. Yes. I was by um he was a prince back then. Uh eager to make a name for himself. Took out a regiment, pursued these deserters here. We did not know what we had in store. I'll tell you that. But I was there. I was doing my damnedest keeping the crown prince alive. In any Lifetime ago. That sounds like a lot of pressure. Oh, well. You... I, I imagine protecting the mages, caring for him, that is pressure. 
<laughs> it's all relative. Uh, yeah, um, it is when you mention it that way. Um, it's good pressure. It assumes keeping the gain alive. You know, tasting his food, uh, making sure there are no traps in his rooms. You know. Wow. I never had a taste of the mages' food, so. I imagine people do not want to poison the mages much. In fact, I think it'd be bad for everyone if, if the mages were to fall. It doesn't matter who is in possession of the mages or what they can do for them. Yeah, I guess so. Huh. Well, don't... I'm not going to start tasting the mages this video anytime soon. That seems kind of rude. So, don't get any ideas. I look to Caspian. Can you turn into a fox right now? That's kind of rude. You don't just ask people if they can turn into animals. I, you said they, they could. I was no, curious. No, it was I, it was just a rumor. Okay. I was merely asking. I will just sign back. Wait and see. Signs. Good. And thank you. Okay, well, I'm gonna go back now. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to that inn. Uh, I might be right behind you. On, on, could you see? And um, kneels down as it starts digging through some of the, the the grass and pulls up just a rusted spearhead. Super near. Just. Into his thumb. I'm gonna follow Fawn back, kind of feeling like a segue into a new scene in the inn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> segue. Segue. Uh, <laughs> Justice would come in maybe like half an hour after the, you know. This. Uh, Caspian's gone for a while. And that's because I think Caspian is off looking for a fox. Um, <laughs> they eventually find one and kind of come back to the inn. And when they spot where Justice is, like, toss some food over there and, like, scoot the fox to, like, go get the food. And then they hide and watch just to see what happens as this fox comes up near Justice. He 100% believes that is Caspian. Oh. Oh. And he looks at Bon and the mage, if the mage is there. But he's just looking at, like, maybe a, a random bystander, like, looks at the fox, like, go, 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 go. <laughs> and it's just like the fox is not responding to him. The and fox just is like, like starts like uh, sniffing around your feet for more food oh wow no no uh no no thank you I, i'm sorry I'm, I'm good uh i'm uh, off off the market okay no you scoot <laughs> eventually just like wanders away and it's like uh... was that Caspian and looking at Fawn. Fawn's not there. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm just in the end. Okay, oh, I'm oh I, didn't real, I didn't realize this was in the end. <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I didn't I know where we were. Uh, yeah, Fawn, Fawn looks up uh, from, uh, from her beer. Second one for the day. However long we're here. I don't know. Um, she's very flushed in the face and like eyes glazed over. Oh, uh, there, there was a fox. You know what? Uh, never mind. You look like you're busy. No, I'm not. I just, um, I've just never had a lot of this stuff before. I don't you... know. No. I don't know if I like it. It tastes kind of gross, but I like the way it makes me feel. 
You will not pace yourself. Uh, there are other things you can drink that make you feel like this. That is, and just take the sniff. Very strong. Very strong. Well, I'm strong too. So that's why the Magus brought me along. Hmm. You know what? Let's. How about we get you back to your room? <laughs> but I'm not tired. I'd, I'd feel better if we get got you up. Let's go. Come on. I'll pay. I think I think uh, Fawn Fawn will will uh, will will give in to, <laughs> to Jess's insistence, uh, and but also try to like bring the beer mug along with her. No, no, we. That's, I'm, that, not, that's their pro I'm not saying uh, yet. That belongs to them. But, no. But you, but you paid for it already. Did you drink water? You're going to have such a headache. Ah. A very silent, you had no idea they were approaching. Caspian just appears and hands Fawn a glass of water. Oh, oh shit. Hook. Whoa, yum. <laughs> Did you have fun as a fox? I, I, I'm very confused. Very confused. Oh, wow. Caspian was a fox? Caspian, you're so cool. I, I saw a fox. I'm pretty sure it was Caspian. Like, a well, fox doesn't just walk in, into the in, into the vax and fiddle. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> do they? Do, do you guys have talking foxes here? No. No? Okay. I, that That's just me. Let's get you home. Uh, if no one else has anything they want to add to that scene, I think it's a good fade to black moment. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, anything else you want to do while we're in Barley Town? Uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, no, honestly, I think I'm good. I think I'm good. All right, let's move along. So I'll go ahead and take control of the Magus. Well, I'll take control of the. I'll do the. The scene setting stuff, but. Yep. Um, the next part of our game, which I'm super excited we're actually getting to, uh, is we're at a crossroads. Oh, <gasps> well, how mm. interesting. Where would you like to go? Would you like to go to the Stormguard Mountains, or would you like to go to Mistwood? <laughs> hmm. Hmm, I wonder. <laughs> I'll be the tiebreaker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll be the tiebreaker. <laughs> Which is gonna be the choosing anyways. <laughs> uh I can't possibly choose. Um so if anyone has a coin handy <laughs> they wanna flip. <laughs> um or I have a C four. I have a fate dice. Uh, okay, on a okay, well, uh, some yeah, uh, Anthony, you can you can roll the d4. On a one and a two, we'll go to Mistwood. On a three to four, we'll go to Stormguard. Okay, you mean a new pair of uh, leggings? Three. So we're going to Stormguard. All right. Or gold. All right. Then. Very cool. Um. So, the next prompt is for Storm Guard is the coming storm. Um, so, I think the whole gang sets off uh, after this, a short time spent in, in Barley Town acquiring. Um, uh, um, goods and supplies and things like that. Um, you all take off on horseback uh, and head into the Stormguard Mountains, which uh, you can see way off in the distance. You can see from Barleytown, even. Um, they're sort of, like, faded 
uh, through the horizon, and as you get closer, they get clearer um, and bigger. Uh, and there is a, uh, a pass, you can kind of see like an opening uh, in the mountains on the road that leads through it. Um, but right over, cresting over the peaks of uh, Stormguard Mountains, you can see cloud formations, um, dark. No signs of lightning or, or anything like that, but definitely look like storms. Um, and a breeze gets stronger and stronger um, the closer that uh, everyone gets to the mountains. Um, and I think that these, these storm clouds <clears throat> don't appear to actually move. They just appear to sort of be permanently fixated atop these mountain peaks. Right. I think with the help of Caspian, Justice would like to scout ahead. All right, so this brings us to a new kind of prompt uh, that I will tell you about. Um, so we had our traits before. The ones with the numbers are perils. Uh, mm -hmm. So a numbered story prompt is a peril. Uh, you would describe the first line as you would um, a regular story prompt. So for scouting ahead, uh, the prompt is the danger and fear. Uh, when you are finished with your scene, um, you roll a dice, and then you describe the result of it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's it for that. So we go in, and then we roll, or do we do our scene and then we roll? Yeah. So you sort of so you'll you'll go into scouting ahead, describe the danger you fear. Uh, and then you'll roll, uh, and then describe the result of the roll. Um, he is very familiar with the Stormguard Mountains, and he would kind of instruct Caspian if they don't really know how to move well in the snow or in the snowstorms. Um, he also um, keeps eyes on the hills and tries to make sure that they're in an advantageous position. This is where things get worse, believe it. Uh, Sadly, of course. You're you're muted. I'm muted. Um, you are. You were. <laughs> I'm gonna kind of look around and then sort of sign. I will go high. Sound it not. Um, and just kind of like point to like maybe like a cliff that maybe is up higher and might have a good vantage point. Like, I go and you go, and then kind of like point forward for you. And he signs bait and points at himself. Yes. And he just starts walking forward. Slowly, waiting for you to start moving up to the cliff. Yeah, so I'm just gonna kind of, like a fox, move my way sort of up the cliffside. It's very graceful and light and quick. He has a hand on his hilt and staring around trepidatiously. This would probably be where um, an ambush would happen if there ever was one. Um, the hills sort of surround the road, and um, there's plenty of vantage, vantage, vantage points like the cliff or trees, um, and so he's so approaching slowly. Um, Caspian disappears from view, like, can't hear them, can't see them, they've gone up there and vanished. They're up there, like, kind of keeping a look down, ready to attack from above if need be. Okay. I think it's time to roll. Two. Okay. Well, that is an ambush. Oh, God. <laughs> the ambush you feared. 
From the beginning. Yeah, Bush, I feared that <laughs> she happens. Oh, God. <laughs> um, would you like to play the ambushers, uh, uh, Nox? I sure would. Uh, I think uh, um, sort of hiding in some of the natural caverns that exist in Stormguard Mountains there is a group uh, of people um, that have been sort of terrorizing uh, these trails these roads and passes through the mountains Um, and there's about six of them three uh, come from a natural cavern uh, sort of lower, um, and three come from a, a cave, uh, situated up a little bit higher, so that way Caspian and, um, and Justice are sort of, like, sandwiched in between, um, and, uh, I think that they are equipped with, um, uh, bows and nets, some of them have daggers, some of them have short swords, um, and, uh, uh, one of them from the group that comes below has a net and flings it, uh, at, um, at whoever is nearest in an attempt to, you know, kind of disable, uh, whoever it is. Um, yeah. Justice would try to pull out his sword and then try to, like, take the net as it's on its way, like, not cut through it, but just sort of let it wrap around his sword. Um, yeah, I mean, you just, you keep narrating that. It is, this isn't D&D, so. <laughs> oh. I looked, <laughs> looked at Caspian. <laughs> Justice looks at Caspian real quick, and then pulls out the dagger that, um, um, that was thrown into the tree earlier, and it sort of flings it at the leader. And he's trying to like just kind of gesture to um, to, uh, to Caspian him first, and it's sort of um, uh, uh, just hoping just hoping that um, he'll be able to fight them off long enough for Caspian to sort of um, break their, their their central leadership. Um, you hear from up on that cliff uh, like a scuffle, and, like some like grunts and ooh. Yeah. And like clanking of metal and thing, <laughs> and then after a moment of like silence, as you're dealing with the guys on the ground, an arrow comes, like pew, like a gun, like pew, more like an arrow, <laughs> pew, comes and like thunk, into the side of one of the guys on the ground, and you see Caspian has stolen a bow from one of the ambushers Amazing. and is now shooting at your attackers to kind of help give you some help from above. Okay, and so meanwhile, Caspian is just like keeping three three of them off, like all swords against swords, you know. And then um, he sort of wraps around um, one of them, one of the blades with with his help, and sort of flings it off. Um, and then um, headbutt, you know. Um, and as arrows just start coming down, he's just sort of um, ro- roaring at them and just sort of whips out his former storm guard keep crest enough do you want the storm guards wrath upon you lay down your arms or i will make you lay them down myself i think that definitely like shocks them into a moment's pause just enough where, um, uh, you know, Pew. yeah, exactly. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, seeing that they have been out, outwitted, outmatched, uh, and they are apparently coming up against one of Stormguard's own, um, you know, they're not stupid. Uh, they sort of look between themselves, uh, and you see them start to scatter back into, the, uh, the mountains and the foothills retreating. Spit out their blood. <laughs> Caspian comes like sliding down the hill on two feet with like two quivers and like three bows. Like, it's totally robbed the people that they had to fight. And he's now like geared up 
offers you a bow. Takes it and then puts a quiver over his back. Very handy. Just like pretends to shoot an arrow. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And so they would probably go back to camp and um, he's just sort of starting to clean his blade in the snow. Looks at um, um, Fawn and he just passage uh, passages for you. I think Raven is reading a book or something. Uh, and like looks up. Oh, uh, great. Thanks. Oh, sh- I, uh, thanks. <laughs> oh, wow. That's so good. Wow. Um, I'm so glad you two did that. Thanks. Uh, she sort of looks over at the major sheepishly. No problem. Uh, uh, and then he just sort of hunkers down to sit and just looks at I like, oh, I'm bleeding. <laughs> Is that her fate to black moment? Yeah. Or, <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, do any other scenes jump out or any other prompts or whatever jump out to people for a scene? I have a scene. All right. I'd love to do something um, in the mountain pass with Fawn okay. in worsening weather. All right. Um, I think one night, these storms, when we're getting deeper into the mountains, there's definitely a growing thunder and lightning. And You see, sorry, Caspian will like flinch with the lightning, um, but has no reaction to the thunder and is just kind of sitting near Fawn and the campsite. And then after a moment, kind of looks over towards her and takes her hand and sort of lays it on the ground. And lightning flashes and starts to count with fingers. And then after a moment, when the thunder happens, you hear or you feel the ground vibrate. Caspian sort of just grins. Oh, wow. That's so good, Caspian. I didn't realize that you could just count between the sound and then the light. Signs. Signs for you. It's getting closer. Oh, oh. Hmm. Yeah, we should probably find... Uh, and Fawn kind of looks worriedly over at, at the mages. We should probably find maybe shelter. I don't think that our tents are going to keep us protected. Tents are no good. Yeah. Okay. Well, <clears throat> you and Justice already scattered ahead and got hurt. Well, Justice did. You seem to do pretty well. Um, uh, so I, I, I will go find the cave or something. That we can shelter under. There were caves. Oh. Okay. I'll I will find them or find more. Do you wish to be alone? Uh well, you know. I feel like I haven't really I really appreciate that the that the mages asked me out of all of the ravens to come with them on this journey and I really don't know why they um you know asked me uh, I can definitely see why 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 they asked you and justice though I mean uh, I mean one you can <laughs> turn into a fox <laughs> um, but you're really sneaky that was a trick I know <laughs> uh, it was really funny um, uh, you know, but you're super fast and sneaky, um, and Justice is really brave and strong, um, and I told him I know, I know how to use a sword, technically I do, but I've never actually had to use one, you know, for anything before, um, 
so I, I don't really uh, I, 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 I feel like this is something um, that I, I want to do to to give back to everybody or I understand um, but if you are lonely you guys because we're all traveling together which is nice I um I I, I just want a way to <clears throat> to to not be a Burden to help. You are, and you see Caspian like pause and try to think about the right way to sign what they want to say to you. You are Magus' choice. You are least burden yeah maybe you are most important no Magus doesn't have favorites Magus has favorites no like pushes your chest <laughs> Why don't you show me where you saw those caves? We can find them together. Okay. But I want to do most of the work once we get there. Okay. Okay. And uh, Fawn is going to pull out, like, some sort of, like, waxed canvas sort of situation to protect them from the, you know, the elements. Um, as they, uh, as they move off. Okay. Fade to black. Fade to black. Uh, any other scenes you want to do here? Are we getting closer to, um, um, Time to uh, uh, leave for now. Uh, we are. So maybe this is as good a time as any to go ahead and uh, put a pin in things until next time. And if we want to do more scenes here, we can. Uh, or we can move on to the next location, which is Castle Stormguard itself. <gasps> dun dun dun! So spooky. Justice will be going back home. What's going yeah. to happen? Justice is going to just kind of like pull his cowl up and <laughs> just like make sure he is not seen. <laughs> nope, right out of there. <laughs> um, awesome. Uh, okay, well, let's go ahead and, and close things out. Um, uh, we did some intros in the beginning. Uh, it's a promotional stuff. Um, you can find us uh, on Twitter at the handles uh, that are uh, underneath our names, or our faces, rather. Uh, so follow us to find out more about what we're doing. Um, uh, nearly immediately after this, uh, uh, in, in 20 minutes on the hour, uh, we'll be playing... I know. <laughs> we'll be playing a game, uh, uh, one of the adventures out of the new <laughs> Salt Marsh book. Um... Uh, that's going to be DN by our very own Anders here. I'm super excited for that. I'm so nervous. <laughs> I'm so excited. Uh, I'll be playing in it. Uh, uh, Anders is going to be doing an awesome job uh, at DMing uh, our game, uh, along with some of our other lovely players that I couldn't be more stoked to play with. Um, before we actually uh, bid farewell and turn off the lights uh, until we're back here on the hour, 
um, let's go ahead and uh, talk about uh, our um, favorite moments, whether it was something about the game itself, um, a description somebody had for something, a moment that you had, uh, you know, in a scene by yourself or with somebody else or whatever. I think my favorite scenes, I have multiple. I think were when we were, people were starting to, to just start to riff on each other, like that whole battlefield, going to the battlefield and going to the inn and having that fox joke, but also um, <laughs> setting up camp with Justice and um, Fawn, like that's when we were able to riff it off of each other and start like making things that we, that we knew we could we'd take on later. That was awesome. All those are awesome. I think my favorite... I really like this... Just I'm going to kind of go general. I like the way this game plays, and I like how by the end of it, it felt so much more comfortable to sort of like jump into scenes, and I think it's set up in a way that kind of... I don't know. It felt really... I, I like the mechanic of it and moving across the map. And, yeah. And I liked tricking Justice into thinking <laughs> the fox was actually me. That was fun. If it's a ruse. <laughs> was a trick. Yeah, that was cute. <clears throat> um, I love this game. I love playing it. I've started it a number of times. I've only ever gotten as far as Stormguard Castle. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, a little bit further past Mistwood. This one has a similar sort of Stormguard Castle location. So I've only got as far as that, so I'm super excited because I think we're going to get past that in our next session together. I'm super excited to really just keep moving and see what other prompts are. Um, and um, uh, I'm so glad just to introduce you all to a new game. Again, this is one of my favorites. Uh, it creates such interesting narratives um, and story like beats and moments between people and characters. Um, uh, I, I love that you can you just make a character and sort of figure them out as you play. I should have had no idea who the hell Fawn Raven of Ravenhall is, and then she just turned into this, like, sort of self-conscious, awkward young person. And I, I just, I love sort of seeing that uh, evolution in other people's characters. Um, so that's just me sort of gushing on the, uh, on, on the game itself. Uh, favorite moment, uh, I really liked, um, uh, uh, like, like, breaking camp or whatever it was between Justice and, and, um, River. Um, and, uh, uh, just kind of finding out the sort of, like, uh, peculiar behavior that River has. Um, and I suspect maybe doesn't even know, like, why... Uh, uh, you know, why uh, why they even do these things. So that's going to be really fun to see. Um, uh, pretty much any time Caspian is in the scene, I love. Because Caspian no. is, is precious. Um, is the most wholesome of all of us. <laughs> uh, and I like that Justice is sort of this, like, battle-hardened person, it seems like. Um... That's my impression of them right now, of him right now. Um, okay. and, oh, no, sorry. Uh, and, um, and seeing how that sort of plays off some of the other characters as well. Um, yeah, I, I love all of it, so there we go. <laughs> all, all my moments are my favorite moments. <laughs> Well, before we, uh, well, actually, I guess that's it. There's really nothing else to say. So, <laughs> stick around to yes. watch uh, Salt Marsh. Yes, we'll be playing through the. I don't even know how you say it. Tamarots. I've been saying Tamarots, Whatever, but sure. I am real bad at reading things and then knowing how to say them. So, Tim Tim Tamarots, whatever, um, is is the next. <laughs> Tim Tam's fate. Yeah, Tim Tam's fate is the next uh, game we'll be playing here. So. Mm -hmm. Tune back in in about 15 minutes. Super stoked for that. Um, and we'll be back here uh, playing through this game. Same time slot, same uh, channel until we uh, play through it. Uh, and until then, we'll see you around. Bye! Bye!